we had to adapt our, our experiences to, to the online environment. And one of the things we did was involved our student mentors. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear this. Can you give me a thumbs up, Ivana, if you can hear it? I'm not sure if that's sharing properly. So let me just uh, try that again. Um, there was no sound, Liz. Okay, I'm just gonna try it again. Does that work better? Hi, first years. Hope yes. you're all making well. Um, this video is coming to you from Primary Sam's. The purpose of this video is to share some of our top tips for success in year two. Hope you enjoy it. Olivia. Here's my top tip. Cheers guys. So Luke's top tip is to not be afraid to ask questions because that's how we learn. So Steph, here's my top tip. So Liv's top tip is have confidence in your own ability. Here's my top tip, Amy. Make sure you have a work-life balance. A personal diary is great for keeping up with deadlines and appointments. I totally agree, it can really make you feel organised and like you're on top of things. Here's my top tip, Charlotte. Thanks for the tip, Claire. So Claire's tip for success is don't put too much pressure on yourselves and the tip that I would like to share with you is don't compare yourselves to others. So thanks for watching, I hope you found our tips for success useful, good luck for year two and remember we are always here. Thank you. Hi year one, welcome. Hi Finn. <clears throat> Hi first years. Hope you're all well and safe. So I think you could see that our student mentors really contributed and got into the spirit of it, but also made themselves human and, and had a lot of fun in terms of creating, creating that little video, which was one of quite a few resources that they helped develop through the online 
promote the belong project, belonging project through, through the online environment. The next thing I want to do is to talk about a little bit and, and, and really demonstrate how we converted the snowballs and aeroplanes activity so that it could be delivered online. And it was important that students felt comfortable and had the option to be anonymous. So when we delivered it at the start of the 2020 academic year, we used Padlet to do it. But what we wanted to do today was to encourage you to share some of your feelings. So we'd like you to reflect on your experience of pivoting from in-person delivery to online or blended delivery and use one or two words to answer these questions on the screen below. So one thing I found challenging in moving from in-person to online working was. And then something that helped me to move online was. So you can see that that's on the screen now and you can enter your words onto there. So you can see that lots of people are finding the technology challenging. And that was certainly my challenge then and it continues to be my challenge today. But lots of other things coming up. And I found student engagement hard as well. Adapting activities, a sense of disconnect. Lots of things coming in. Ivana, can we move on to the next question? Something that helps me to move online. So here we start to see that team support and other people, despite the fact that we were all remotely working, were still a key part of, of helping us to be successful. I'll let that run for, uh, for another minute or so, but I just really wanted to thank you for, for listening to me and, and then um, to introduce the next speaker. So I'm really pleased that we, we are now going to move on to an activity. So really pleased to interview, introduce our, our colleague Pravini Baram, and she is the program manager at ECHO, which is the Center for Diversity Expertise at Utrecht in the Netherlands. And she's going to demonstrate an activity about engaging online. Um, and it's the fishbowl activity. And some of my colleagues and colleagues from other universities and students from other universities are going to discuss this question, I don't see colour because all students are equal to me. But I'm not going to say any more. And I'm really very, very pleased to be able to welcome Pravini, who's been a, a huge source of, of kind of inspiration and support to the I Belong project. So Pravini, over to you.
they they can start they can go right now uh they will be joining in a minute uh just to uh, collect all students sorry for this This is when our technology becomes more challenging when we're kind of getting a lot of people to join in and, and participate in the next activity. Okay, sorry, we now have all the participants there joining the room. I can see everybody is here now. So Provini, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you also to everybody else, particularly some of my colleagues from Edge Hill who joined at the last minute yesterday when we had a few sort of crises about participation. So Provini, thank you so much and I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Liz, um, for having me here today. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, what we'll be doing uh, now is the fishbowl activity to give you a sense of what comes up in um, Team Teacher Reflections. And for that, I'm going to share my screen. Um, so I wanna make sure that everyone is able to see. Uh, just making sure that my screen is shared, if people can nod to make sure that you see it. Okay, great, thank you so much. So we're going to do the fishbowl activity and I'm going to set the stage first uh, to let you know what we're going to do. Um, first, we're going to create an outer circle and an inner circle with um, uh, five volunteers. And uh, those volunteers are in this uh, call with me. So I will invite them uh, in a minute um, after I have explained what we're going to do. Um, and uh, in the inner circle, uh, the participants are going to discuss a topic and a statement. And I'll introduce the statement also in a minute. The remaining participants are part of the outer circle. And I invite everyone who is watching uh, today to join this outer circle and um, participate in the exercise. And um, the uh, question that I want to pose to people in the outer circle is to observe the conversation in the inner circle, to uh, reflect on how the conversation is going and to um, uh, observe which perspectives in your opinion are dominant and which perspectives are underrepresented. So is there anything that you feel is missing from the conversation? And are there any um, insights or reflections that you think would be of value uh, for that specific um, conversation? Um, the inner circle will discuss this topic for about seven to eight minutes. And after um, um, seven to eight minutes, I'm going to intervene and pause the conversation for a minute and uh, ask two participants from the inner circle to leave the inner circle and two participants to join. Um, so new participants from the outer circle to join the inner circle. So what happens is uh, that we'll have two new voices who will join the conversation and who will hopefully bring their perspectives uh, that they felt were missing uh, to the conversation. And that will give us a sense of um, how conversations are taking place when certain people have a seat at the table or certain people are left out of the conversation. Um, so this is the exercise that we're going to do. Um, and um, I hope that uh, those of you who are watching 
can also uh, reflect. Unfortunately, I can't uh, invite you to share um, your reflections for today due to the lack of time. So at the end of the activity, I will offer some, uh, some of my own and perhaps you will recognize uh, your reflections as well. Um, for the conversation, it's important to keep uh, the context in mind. The context is that we will talk about the uh, um, statement in the context of COVID-19 and online learning. Um, because um, online learning has amplified challenges that already existed pre-COVID. Uh, so um, we deal with, uh, in higher education, we deal with a diverse student population who have you know, diverse lived experiences, who deal with different circumstances and um, who also have different needs. So then the question becomes, what does this mean for online engagement and how does that affect sense of belonging? And to what extent do you need to um, take on a colorblind or color brave approach? And colorblind um, and color brave uh, can be you know, um, interpreted in, in the literal sense when it comes to you know, uh, skin color but uh, we also use it as a metaphor for other types of diversity. So think of gender, social economic background, ec uh, academic background, um, uh, mental health, etc. So um, to what extent do you um, acknowledge, you know, these different starting positions and what does that mean for the learning environment? So what I'm going to do now is invite five uh, people in the inner circle and those people are Nadia, Sarah, Mark, Charlotte, and Ming. And unfortunately, I can't um, ask you to uh, introduce yourselves again to, to the lack of time. So I want to thank you um, for joining the conversation today. And I'm going to invite you uh, to share your perspective on the following statement uh, and to what extent you agree or disagree. And the statement is, I don't see color because all students are equal to me. So keep the context of online learning in mind. And uh, we look forward to hearing your perspective on this statement. And again, after eight minutes, I will uh, intervene and um, ask two new participants to join the conversation. So the floor is yours and I will leave it up to you uh, who wants to kick off the conversation. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, for having us. Um, I think I start and I think the statement is problematic in that we cannot close our minds to the colors of students. I think everyone has a color and um, the university setting is characterized by its high diversity and only by being aware of and facing diversity we can learn together and create a sense of belonging and especially in times of the corona pandemic To me, it seems all more important that we include and respond to the students' diversity. Yes, uh, I also agree with Charlotte and thank you for, for having us. Um, I really think that, um, and what I experience is uh, that sometimes um, uh, people think that if they, don't, if they don't make a certain topic an issue, they don't have to, to acknowledge it. And that perpetuates the problem. And yes, nowadays with, um, with coronavirus and with online learning, this is even more problematic. So uh, I disagree with the, with the quotes that, that you, you post and that's my, my perspective. Uh, hi, hi. My name is Ming-Chen. Thank you for letting me take part in this activity. I think this is a very interesting and very thought-provoking statement. And my personal opinion is that I do see the color, but I do think all students are equal to me. And I think this is partly based on my personal experience. And I used to be international students, did my master's degree and PhD studies in the UK. And also I joined five universities in the UK in the past 10 years. And I do experience, and I do feel I have different experiences partly related to the color, which makes me more aware of treating students and staff equally with regards to the different color. Hi, thank you for having me also. 
Um, I agree with what Ming said because I do believe that we don't want to see the color, but um, uh, for me, it's the same. So I am aware of the differences between people, the diversity that is present. Um, but I do believe that students are equal. Um, and also because of my experiences, I believe that it's very important for others to also feel that they belong somewhere. And in this case, in the university, and especially in the online environment, I think it's very important to see what the needs of these uh, diverse students are. Um, but I, yes, I also disagree because I think it's very hard to uh, not see color since it's very, yeah, the, the term is very broad, actually. If, if, if I may uh, add in, I um, really like the question because it was real good linguistic playtime and lists lots of thinking about my about the words, what they mean to me, what my own value systems are, etc. And my initial response, I just scribbled down, it says, you know, my personal value of all students having rights to equality doesn't make me blind to colour, the histories uh, and potential for inequality. Um, I, I, was, I was seeing the idea of blind next to the idea of vision uh, and appreciation of diversity, the assumptions that we make about people's lived experiences, stereotypes and conscious bias, things like that. With a background as people enter into online environments of digital poverty, disability, cultural norms, and the assumptions that we make about those type of things, and simply the needs just for differentiation of, of experiences because people have different, they have different needs. Uh, and the idea of personalization being part of the idea of feeling included, even being recognized. Um, so I think the idea of all students being equal to me is kind of, it feels like part of a value system. Uh, but the statement itself feels like well-intentioned naivety, if I'm honest. Uh, belonging, presence, conversations, uh, pursuit of mutual understandings, they have to be characteristics of how people interact if they feel they're going to belong online or anywhere for me. So that's what it evoked in myself. We have some time left. So if anyone within the inner circle wants to respond to what has been said so far, please feel free. Um, yes, well, what Mark said is very important um, because that's what makes it hard, I think, um, since we do speak a lot about equality and um, color and diversity. Um, but I also think that we are not very aware all the time that we are very busy with the differences also. So when I maybe take an example in my online classes, um, they really try to help students in, this, in these days to feel like they, um, I don't know how to explain it, but that they have to participate and they, they can also be very open about their struggles, but that it's not always there when, for example, in my case, my language barrier, maybe that they look at this because of my color. So it's like, okay, we are trying to help everybody, but uh, the problem is that maybe they're not actually looking at what the struggles are to try to help this. Um, and maybe that's also something that can be, um, I don't know, <laughs> that they can try to uh, make something in their, in their curriculum or something to also help the equality um, instead of just like, okay, everybody has their differences and we're just going to accept them all. But um, it's just for me, like, how are we going to help these students also to feel like they are equal? Thank you. I'm going to pause the conversation here because I think you actually post something that a lot of people want to respond to. So <laughs> I'm curious to also hear um, from the new uh, uh, people who will join the conversation. And um, Nadia, I'm going to ask you then to, to leave uh, the inner circle and thank you for your contribution today. 
Um, and I will leave it up to the others in the inner circle. If, is there anyone who wants to volunteer to, to leave? You can raise your hand. Mark, okay, thank you. So Nadia and Mark will leave the inner circle and I'm going to invite two new participants. And the two new participants are Felix and Shay. So you will continue uh, the conversation. Welcome Felix and Shay to the inner circle and you may continue the conversation. Do you, know, do you want to go first, Shay, or do you want me to go first? I presume that Shay was me, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm happy it's to go first. Shay. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. It's us, Shay. That's fine. Um, so I think my first kind of thought of reflections when I read the statement were very similar to Mark's, um, in kind of thinking about how it positions, what it kind of understood to mean by equality, and I think that sometimes a very he used the word kind of naive, and I, I think that that's kind of where I'm coming from. I think um, equality is ensuring that everybody's treated in exactly the same way. And I would disagree with that and say that equality is ensuring that we, we recognize people's experiences and we recognize people's subjectivities and we recognize their color in every sense of, of that word. Um, you know, be that you know literally their color or their background or their academic background as people were talking about before um so I, I i am kind of inclined to agree with something that mark said about people who say well you know i i don't see color because i treat everybody equally it's a little bit misguided um i think it, it it's something which actually when you unpick it is quite a um quite a problematic statement um for me people's color or our students color um however we we take that word to mean means that we recognize what they are bringing to sessions um, and therefore it's 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 almost more of a uh, a welcoming inclusion of all the different strengths and all the different experiences and all the different backgrounds that people are bringing to a room but that as educators and as lecturers we are mindful of that and ensuring that everyone is in an environment where all their subjectivities and all their experiences are part of who they are and are we are mindful of them when we are um, kind of helping them to succeed and, and be the best people they can be. And, and ultimately education is about, you know, life chances and changing lives. And I think if we're looking at people's lives, we have to look at, you know, everything which has happened in their life and the experiences they've had. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, my thoughts on the situation. Yeah, for me, um, I like to uh, align my my thoughts with everybody else's um, opinion here uh, with regards to that. So yes, I do disagree as well. Um, and I like to take on what Nadia mentioned in terms of um, it's very difficult uh, not to see differences. Um, it's very hard not to see people's color. It's, it is it is safe. It's, it's, it's just fake to say, oh, I, I don't see that person's color. And um, I'm looking at this from my experience um, as um, an initial teacher educator and having a prior knowledge of my students uh, pre-COVID, um, yes, made me um, think about my sessions, my delivery, online delivery, um, my personal one-to-one -one tuition and things like that with them. So with that and Picking on what Mark said, um, I, it helped me personalize or differentiate um, my delivery with the support for individual students. And I think as educators, we, we can't run away by saying, oh, I don't see color. We all see color. We all have our prejudices, every one of us. That's, that's for me, is, 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 is the way we're wired as humans. And I think the conversation should now be taken to the next level, how can we effectively within that context or that space, um, online space or online teaching space, how can we effectively differentiate through uh, AFL questioning, you know, the kind of questions we ask where we invite the lurkers, those who do not want to participate or engage with the learning process. Um, so that's my thoughts, yeah. So we have room for one more contribution. If there's anyone who wants to share, please feel free. Yeah, I, I think Felix touched a very important point and also Nadia and Mark mentioned this as well. 
in the online learning context, you know, I think the influence of color is visible, sometimes invisible, but it does exist. And this touches another thing, how do we, how could we get students engaged? And I think what Felix, Mark and Nadia has mentioned is to increase students' engagement, that's including them in co-creating the curriculum, which is very important. All right, thank you so much to everyone. Also Charlotte, uh, Sarah, Ming, Felix and Shay for uh, joining the Inner Circle and for this short but sweet um, uh, reflection on um, a colorblind or color brave approach in online education. Um, and um, some of the things that I noticed in your conversation was um, how everyone really uh, felt uh, space to reflect. Um, there was a really nice flow in the conversation in that sense. And with every contribution, the conversation deepened. I felt you were really adding on to each other's perspectives. And that's interesting because you all um, were aligned in the way you approach this conversation. And yet you had you know, different uh, points of view to enrich in the conversation. Also when Shay and Felix uh, joined. Um, and I think what's interesting, because I also asked the question, which perspectives are underrepresented? In that sense, um, the underrepresented perspective would be, uh, you know, those who agree with the statement. And what does that then mean for a conversation? Because I can imagine uh, not everyone um, within an institution, you know, um, um, uh, feels uh, this way, maybe. Um, not because they don't want to, but because, again, some of you addressed, there are good intentions behind it to not differentiate because you want to treat everyone equally. So then the question becomes, how do you engage with those colleagues uh, to um, make sure that, you know, uh, the, the, the vision that you shared in this conversation is also um, felt more broadly within the institution. So um, I believe uh, that's it for time. Uh, so I'm going to thank you again uh, for um, uh, participating in this uh, session. I hope the people who are watching also were, were able to reflect and maybe you recognize some of the um, reflections I shared. Um, and I'm gonna give it back to Liz uh, to continue uh, this uh, conversation. Thanks again to everyone and I'll see you later on for another activity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pravini. And, and I think that that really shows the challenges of, of engaging people on, online, particularly, I, I think that point about people who have different views is, is really difficult to bring them in. And, and perhaps it would be easier in, 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 a, in a classroom or face-to-face -face experience, but it's really difficult. And, and, and also, I think what we started to do is to explain how some of these questions can be discussed online. And so we've been, been undertaking activities with staff teams online, thinking about some of these difficult questions. But it's much more difficult when you can't see people's body language in quite the same way as you can when, when, you're, when you're all in the same room together. <laughs>